Okay, in this video, we're going to have a look at a feature that most people have on their garage door. It's a safety feature. They're sometimes called safety sensors or electric eye. So it's an infrared beam that's shot across the opening of the garage door. And if somebody closes the door and somebody or something trips the beam, like you can see here, the door will stop, it will reverse and it will go back up. So in this video, we're going to have a look at how the sensor works and how you can build your own standalone system. Okay, I bought a pair of sensors from Amazon and they're pretty universal. Now the one on the left is a transmitting emitter. It's emitting infrared beam and it has a yellow LED on top and that comes on when it's powered by 6 volts DC. If you look at the end, you can actually see a clear LED. That's the infrared emitter. So the sensor on the right, this is the detector and it's detecting the infrared signal and when, it's, when they're in alignment and it sees an uh, infrared signal this, this LED will come on, it's a green LED so on the end you can see it has a lens so it's focusing the infrared beam which is a 38 kilohertz modulated beam into a detector which is inside and when they're in, in alignment and it sees the, the correct frequency 38 kilohertz this green LED will come on okay each sensor has two wires coming out of it now one is solid white Another wire is white with a black stripe. Now the wire with the black stripe, that's positive, that's plus 6 volts, and the white wire is ground. Okay, the kit comes with a bracket so you can mount the sensor to the wall. Now the sensor has a bump on it, plastic bump with a slot, and you can fit a bolt in there, like this. Now you can attach the bracket to the sensor, and this bump gives you a swivel action for alignment purposes. Okay, with the wing nut attached and it's loose, now we can swivel. And we can swivel it until it lines up. And once it lines up and the light comes on, we tighten the wing nut. Okay, to power up the infrared transmitter, all you need is a 6 volt DC wall wart. You just plug it in the wall, power up the transmitter. And when the system is up and running, uh, the transmitter is on all the time. So it's a no-brainer, so it's, it's powered all the time. Okay, here's my setup for infrared transmitter. So I have my wall wart. I got it plugged into a barrel connector on my breadboard which is feeding my transmitter and you can see the LED is on and to test out if it's transmitting if I turn off the light on my bench the camera should be able to pick up the infrared signal you can see it there it says the camera can actually pick up the, that spectrum so you can see that the infrared is on so it's working so the transmitter is on all the time so you hook it up into your system you line it up with the receiver until the little green light comes on and then you're set up to go. Okay, to power up the infrared receiver, we also use 6 volts DC. It's coming from my power supply. So this is plus 6 volts. This is ground. Now we're feeding it through a resistor, a series resistor of 150 ohms, which you can see here. That's connected up to the, the wire with a black stripe, and that's feeding the receiver. Now the light isn't on, but if I bring my transmitter into view, you can see the light comes on. So now we know our setup works and we're getting continuity between the transmitter and the receiver. Okay, so here's our setup. So we have the infrared transmitter powered by 6 volts. It's on all the time, sending a beam over to the receiver. It's also powered by 6 volts through a 150 ohm resistor. Now when the beam is sent over from the transmitter to the receiver, the green light will come on and the receiver indicate we got continuity. So now how do we get an output of the receiver to drive a relay or to feed into a microcontroller? Well, the output is coded. When we, got, when we got continuity from the transmitter to the receiver, inside the receiver there's a little switch and it's shorting out the power supply. So when we got continuity, it's going to short the power supply every six and a half milliseconds for a half a millisecond. If we look at the scope, you can see the waveform. When we got continuity, we're going we're to short out the power supply every six and a half milliseconds for a half a millisecond. And when we block the infrared signal to the receiver, the output will go to a steady 6 volts. So now we have to build a circuit to decode those two waveforms to get our proper output. Okay, here's my interface circuit that's decoding the two waveforms. So when we got continuity between the transmitter and receiver, we're going to have a pulse train every 6.5 milliseconds. And that's going to kick up a monostable. You can see on my breadboard I got a CD4538 retriggable monostable. So those edges of those pulses will kick it up and keep the LED on. Now when I block the infrared signal, the waveform is going to go to a steady 6 volts. There will be no edges, so the, so the monostable isn't being triggered, and the LED will be off. 
So that's how we could decode it. It's very reliable. Just by using one chip, 4538. It's about a buck, buck 50 for one of those, and you can get them from DigiKey. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of the circuit that I built on my breadboard, my little interface circuit, using a CD4538 retriggerable monostable, which you can see in the middle. Now my RC timing components are my 820k ohm resistor and a 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor, and together that will give me an on time of 8.2 milliseconds. So when we get a pulse into pin 5, a high to low transition, when the receiver shorts, the Q output is going to go high for 8.2 milliseconds and it's going to drop low again. Now if we get continuous pulses into pin 5 faster than 8.2 milliseconds, you'll keep the Q output high and the LED will stay on. But when the output of the receiver now goes to steady 6 volts, we won't get any more triggers into pin 5, the Q output will time out and the LED will shut off. Now I have a, a transistor hooked up to, to the Q0 and the open collector could be fed into a GPIO of a microcontroller that has an internal pull-up so it will work on a 5 volt or a 3.3 volt microcontroller because it's an open collector. Okay here's a breadboard of another project that I'm working on. It also has a CD4538 retriggerable monostable which you can see right here and my capacitor and my resistor, my RC timing components will give an on time of 3 seconds. So right now my digital probe is showing low and this is my trigger input to the monostable, this push button. So when I press it, it's going high for, for 3 seconds, then it's going to go low. I'll do it again. Watch it go from uh, low to high when I pr press the button. So it's high, 3 seconds later, it comes down. Now if I press it and give it another pulse, another pulse, it's going to keep it up. It's never going to time out. Now when I let it go and leave it, after 3 seconds it times out and she comes low again. So that's how a retriggable monostable works and that's how I'm using it in my, in my infrared uh, link. It's the same thing when, it, when we're getting multiple pulses, it keeps it up and then when the pulses go away, it times out and goes low. Okay, here's a bit of theory on how this circuit works. So we have the infrared detector, it's powered by 6 volts. So here's our 6 volts power supply, comes in through the diode, charges up this capacitor and powers the infrared detector. Now when the detector detects the transmitter, it's lined up, it's going to send out these pulses every 6.5 milliseconds to this transistor. Now this transistor is across the power supply, so every pulse will short the power supply out and we're going to get that data now sent back to our interface board. Now while it's shorting out the power supply for a very short time, this capacitor is going to keep the infrared detector powered for that very short time and it can't discharge this way because it's being blocked by this diode. So instead of using a, a infrared detector you could put a microcontroller circuitry in here and you could have it sense say temperature and when the temperature hits a threshold it could send data back on the power lines. Okay so now you know how to get these two little sensors up and running with a little interface board and the circuit is fail safe. If the wires to the receiver get cut or shorted you're still going to get a trigger alarm. Now maybe you're not interested in building an infrared link like this, but now you know how to have power and data on the same twisted pair and you could use that in other projects.